What we've been doing so far is taking a Venn diagram that's already been made and then trying to sort of extract meaning out of it, okay? When you take something and you're trying to understand what it means, we have a word for that. It's called interpretation. So what you've been doing is interpreting a Venn diagram that's been handed to you. And as you can see, that takes some uh, careful thought, but it's doable, right? What's a lot more challenging, and therefore more important, is not interpreting a Venn diagram that has been handed to you, but getting a bunch of information, and then building the Venn diagram yourself. You have to take on the role of constructing a Venn diagram when all they hand you is words and some numbers. And I'm about to hand you some words and numbers, and we'll see if we can construct this Venn diagram together, okay? So I've already started. You can write down some of this if you like. Let's imagine we've got 12 friends, and they all attend a banquet together. Then you get some information about what the friends ate during the banquet. You've got seven of them who ate apple pie, nine of them who ate beef, and the last piece of information I didn't get to write down before is there was one who ate neither of them. Okay? One ate neither. Now, in a second, I'm going to ask you a question, or a couple of questions actually, about this situation. But to start off, we need to understand how can I represent this information on a diagram, okay? Now remember before, when I asked you to create that table, I left a little space blank on the bottom left hand, bottom left hand side. I said, hey, I want you to think about when a Venn diagram is the important tool to use. Obviously, if they give you a Venn diagram, you need to use it. But sometimes they won't give you one, and there's a clue inside this question that tells you. It's kind of like the big red flag. It's like, hey, hey, don't just do a list. Don't just draw an array. Don't even do a tree. You really need a Venn diagram to wrap your head around what's going on. Does anyone notice anything unusual about the numbers here? Yeah. Well, when you add 7, 9, and 1 together, they don't equal 12. 7 plus 9 plus 1. Last I checked was 17, right? So there's more people here apparently than are at the banquet. So what we're actually having a look at here is that like in our original Venn diagram, clearly there must be some people who did more than one thing. Does that make sense? Right? That's the only way we can account for these extras that seem to appear. Okay? So underneath where you've got this information, let's visualize this by drawing like before. We'll do a box. Uh, mercifully, I'm not going to ask you to draw three circles. How many circles do we need for this situation? Just two. One of them is going to represent apple pie, one of them is going to represent beef. Can you tell I was hungry when I wrote down this question? Okay, so put your two circles down. Um, conveniently, one of the things starts with A and one starts with B, so let's just label those for the circle. Now, Let's think about how we can piece this together. Um, we've got all these numbers here, but I'm just going to say to you right out the gate, right? Some numbers are easier to use than others. For instance, see this number 12? Right away you should know, I can't just write 12 anywhere on the diagram, right? Because 12, like this number up here, right? 12 is what you should get after you add up all the numbers that eventually will appear, okay? So I can't use 12 yet. Have a look at the rest of the, the information. Which of those do you think might be the easiest to use first? What do you reckon? The needle, just put it at the bottom. Okay, fantastic. So you remember how before we said, oh, we've got this extra 10, and we know they didn't take cut off traits, so they must be on the outside. Same, guy with, same way with this guy, right? So I'm going to put this one just on the outside. I know that it's neither apple pie nor beef, so I know this number is here. So next I've got to use, we've already decided this one is kind of like last, right? Um, I want to use one of these numbers, right? So how do I do that? Well, if you've got 12 people in total, we've just accounted for one of them, right? On the outside. How many people are left to fit somewhere? There are 11 left, right? So those 11, do you agree, are somewhere inside the circles? So far so good? Okay, so 11 inside the circles. How many people will be in this A circle altogether? Or the whole A circle. There should be seven, right? But if I know there should be seven here and eleven in the circles altogether, does that tell us what this number outside of the A circle is? What should that be? That has to be there's, there's seven here, seven mm -hmm. here, and there's eleven in all of the circles. So what's missing? If you've got the seven, it's the four. very good. Think about it for a second. I know I'm going to have 11 in here by the end. I know 7 have to be in here. I don't know where the 7 are, but they're there somewhere. 
meaning the other four only can be here. Okay? Now we can actually start to fill in the rest of the information. If there are four people here, how many of the rest of them who ate beef? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it, should be five. it should be five, because you want five plus four to equal nine. And that gives you the last number. How many people ate apple pie only? Two. Two, because that two plus five gives you the seven. Do a quick check. Two plus five plus four plus one. Twelve? Thumbs up. Okay. Let me ask you two questions on the basis of this. Number one, um, if we, and you don't have to write this down, I'm just, it's simple enough for me to post to you. Oh, sorry, did you need to? Okay. Um, for the rest of you, <coughs> if we select any friend at random, what's the probability that they ate apple pie? What's the probability that they ate apple pie? One six. Be careful there. If I just say apple pie, full stop. Oh. I can include anyone in the circle, right? Anyone in the circle? So I would say that's seven out of 12. If I were interested in just this group, thanks girls. Thank you. If I were interested in the two that Pam was talking about, how would I have to rephrase the question? Apple pie. Very good. I have to say probability of apple pie, and then the, the word only is what tells you I'm only looking at part of the circle. What if I ask you, what's the probability of someone eating both? Which part of the circle is that? It's the five, right? And again, it's out of same samples based on conditions. Okay. So if you return back to your original table, if you want to fill in that blank now, let's have a think about it, right? Look at the numbers that you've got. Look at what happens when you represent this, right? The key situation to know when a Venn diagram is going to be the way to go, if they don't give you one yourself, right, themselves, is that, have a look at the numbers. Have a look at the numbers in the situation. When you add them up, do they have some sort of like contradiction? Do they do not total to the number that you have at the top? That's when you know there must be an overlap, and the word overlap, hopefully that like triggers for you. Oh yeah, yeah, overlaps are things with Venn diagrams. Does that make sense? Okay. Lots of students, they, they meet these, and then they're like, they'll start drawing a tree diagram or an array, and they can't account for the fact that there are people in two groups, like on two branches of the tree simultaneously, it becomes very confusing.